In this video, we're going to go over installing and using Django all auth to cover our authentication using the Django contrib auth and using social authentication systems similar to Python social auth, which I've covered in a previous video. We're going to start off by doing an install of Django all auth with a pip install Django all auth, and that's going to go through its normal install process. There are several things that we need to configure with it in our settings files. We're going to go to our installed apps and we're, and we're going to add a few. The first one is Django Contrib Sites. This was actually removed in Django 1.6 and up from being a default installed app, so we need to add it back ourselves. The next several are all auth specific. We have the normal all auth, then we have all auth.account for our account synchronization stuff. Then we have social account and all our social account providers Facebook. This gives us the mechanism for doing different social accounts and then the providers one is specifically to have the functionality for Facebook. If we go down a little bit we have our authentication backends. I've pulled this in from our global settings and we're going to keep the Django Contrib Auth model backend and we're just going to add the all auth authentication backend to the list. Along with the authentication backend, we need a couple of template context processors. The first one we're going to add is the request context processor that's by default in the list of template context processors in Django. It's actually commented out in the global one, so we need to add it manually. Then we're going to add the two specific all auth context processors, one for the normal authentication and the other for our social accounts. And then finally we have a few actual settings that we need to go ahead and set. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our site ID and set it to 1. This was normally in your settings by default in Django 1.5 and below. Then we're going to set our login redirect URL to the root of our website since we don't have anywhere specific we want it to send. We want our users to go after they log in. Then the other real key one that you need to look at is the social account providers dictionary. Our first key in that is Facebook because we're setting up the Facebook provider so that we can do our Facebook login. Setting the scope that we only really want to pull email addresses in, but in this place is where you would set the other configuration elements that you would want to get back from Facebook. We're setting the auth type to authentication and we're setting the method to OAuth2. And from reading the documentation, verified email is kind of an unknown substance, so we just leave it set to false. So with that in mind, we really only have one more code configuration setting to do, and that's to set our URL. What we're going to do is we're going to set the slash accounts, and we're going to include alloth.urls into that. That's all built into our Django alloth application that we're using. This gives us all of our uh, URLs for authentication. It also gives us some basic URLs for doing logging in and logging out. All auth actually comes with a bunch of templates for doing your basic authentication system. And we'll see a couple of those here in a minute. And then finally we're going to do our sync DB to set our initial tables. We're going to create our user account and then we're going to follow all that up by actually migrating our other tables in the database and as you'll notice there's a whole bunch to run so with that we're actually ready to go ahead and set some settings in our database if we'll open up our admin in the browser we'll go ahead and start by adding a new social application we're going to set our provider to facebook we're going to set the name of go django demo we're going to add our client id and our secret key that we get from when we create a Facebook demo application. And as a note on your demo application, in the OAuth redirect, you want to set the redirect, at least for testing purposes, to localhost and then whatever port that you use. And then we're also going to add example.com to our activated sites and then save our new social application that we're going to use for logging in. To test this, we're going to log out and then go to slash account slash login. Notice there is a sign in area and a sign up area. And then also you can choose Facebook as well. We're going to go ahead and choose Facebook to log in. It's going to go over to the Facebook page and my last pass is going to automatically log us in. And once we're logged in, it redirects us back to our home page and you notice that by it saying welcome back buddy too. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to log out. So we'll go to accounts log out. 
and confirm that we're going to sign out and we're back to our home page and we can see that I am effectively logged out. So if we go back to our login, we're going to log in using the normal login method that comes in Django. And but I'm going to go ahead and use my super user credentials so that we can actually access the admin. So now that we're logged in, we'll go to admin and let's take go ahead and take a look at our users table. We have buddy for my super user and buddy2 for the social login that I set up. If we click on social application tokens, we see the token that was associated with my account when I logged in. And in social accounts, I have the specific information from Facebook. That's really it involved in using Django all off. As you probably noticed, we had some pre-built forms for doing our logging in and logging out. That was actually built into Django all off and included when we went ahead and used our included URLs. Those are actually very simple to override or to implement into our own templates. If you need to do that, I recommend just looking through their code and seeing how they do it and then just implementing that in yours. And with that, that should get you started in using Django all off.